the right way to dice, improper boiling techniques, forgetting a ricer, these are just a few of the mistakes people make when they're trying to perfect classic mashed potatoes. When it comes to whipping up the best bowl of mashed potatoes, the type of spud you select matters. What we need is a few good taters. Red Bliss potatoes might be delicious when they're diced up into a hash, but they don't play well in mashed potatoes because of their waxy texture. That's why clever chefs know to reach for Yukon Gold or russet potatoes. Russets tend to get soft and starchy when you boil them, lending a smooth texture to the end product. Yukon Gold potatoes also bring a lot to the table, with their naturally creamy texture and robust flavor. As the name suggests, they'll lend a warm, buttery color to your mashed potatoes. For the best results, use a combination of the two. You'll get tons of texture from the russets and a hefty dose of rich potato flavor from the Yukon Golds. You should always start with your spuds in cold water if you want creamy mashed potatoes that don't taste overprocessed or gluey. Popping the potatoes straight into boiling water can cause them to cook unevenly, with the outsides heating up far more rapidly than the interiors. Doing this might not make sense at first, since you usually cook veggies in boiling water, not cold water. However, fighting the instinct to slide your spuds into a raging pot of water will pay off big time in terms of consistency and taste. What excellent boiled potatoes! many years since I've had such an exemplary vegetable. When you heat the water while your potatoes are in the pot, they'll be cooked much more evenly. Since the inside and outsides get done simultaneously, you won't wind up with uncooked areas. This small step can make a world of difference and give you incredibly smooth, lump-free mashed potatoes that you'll love. That is, unless your name is Ross Geller. Ross needs lumps! Although dicing your potatoes super small might help them cook quicker, it's not the most effective way to make mashed potatoes. Two small spuds can soak up lots of extra water, making them overly saturated and runny when mashed. Plus, soggy spuds can have trouble drawing in butter, sour cream, milk, or any other goodness you might add to the mash later on. Instead, cut your potatoes into about 1-inch pieces. This size is the sweet spot. They'll cook relatively quickly, but they won't soak in too much excess water. Also, it's important to remember to slice and dice your veggies to the same size. Differently sized pieces will cook unevenly, and you could wind up with some raw or overcooked bits. Ultimately, the more time you spend on your knife work, the more uniform your dish will be. A good cook knows that you should salt and season your end product, especially when it comes to mashed potatoes. But a great cook understands that salting the water is a huge key to cooking success. It makes logical sense to salt your water. After all, your potato chunks are soaking in all of that salty flavor as they cook. So why not give them a leg up by sprinkling in a pinch or two before boiling? Salting your potato water can transform your spuds from bland to briny and beautiful. Of course, the amount of salt you use is up to you, and you can always add a little bit more later on. You can also add other herbs and spices like bay leaves, dried rosemary, or freshly ground pepper to the pot. The potatoes that you snag from the store will almost certainly be pre-washed, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't give them another rinse before you get cooking. According to Idaho Potato, washing off your spuds is a crucial way to get that excellent potato flavor without any additional add-ons that you might not want, you know, like dirt or sand. It's always a good idea to wash your potatoes, even if you're peeling them, but it's essential if you're whipping the skins into your mash. Pay close attention to any bumps, ridges, or eyes in your potatoes. These areas are where a lot of dirt and bacteria can build up over time. If you have a vegetable scrubbing brush, use it to really get into those nooks and crannies. This extra prep work will definitely pay off when you're serving mashed potatoes to your family and friends. Mom, you're always trying to give me potatoes. What is it with you? I just think they're neat. Although you can technically use a potato masher or even fork to mash up your spuds, nothing does the job quite like a potato ricer. If you want professional-grade potatoes, consider investing in one of these tools. Not only will a potato ricer shear your spuds into tiny strands, but it will also aerate them and minimize the amount of mixing that you have to do later on. Overmixing is one of the biggest contributors to gluey potatoes. According to the Farmer's Almanac, potato ricers are the key to uniform, fluffy, restaurant-style potatoes. They're also super simple to use. Simply squish your spuds through the ricer and watch them come out the other side in delicate strands. If you make a lot of potatoes or simply want to be a master in the kitchen, be sure to get your hands on a potato ricer. Even beginner cooks know that two of the keys to rich, delicious mashed potatoes are butter and milk. However, it's essential to get your temperatures right if you want to take your spuds to the next level. If you're putting cold milk into your mashed potatoes, you're cooling them unnecessarily. Cooler potatoes require more stirring, leading to a gluey mashed potato consistency. Nobody wants that. According to Martha Stewart, warm milk is the way to get creamy, cloud-like mashed potatoes every time. You can heat your milk and butter on the stove or even microwave them so that they're hot, but not boiling. Then, fold them gently into the potatoes without over-stirring. On the flip side, when you serve the mashed potatoes, you want to add any additional butter cold so it will melt over the hot potatoes and give you that extra buttery flavor with each bite. 
believe it or not, a pinch of baking powder can give your potatoes a silky smooth texture and a delicious mouthfeel. Baking powder naturally helps dough rise, and it can do the same for your spuds if you add just a little bit before running your potatoes through a ricer. The result will be fluffier, tastier mashed potatoes. Just be careful not to add too much. You want it to work in the background, not show up in the front of the potato's taste profile. The other way to make the most of baking powder is to start with totally dry spuds. Drain and save your potato water, then let your potato pieces thoroughly dry before sprinkling the baking powder on. Otherwise, the baking powder will mix with the water. Of course, you can add potato water, milk, and butter to the bowl after you finish mashing your taters. Although some potato purists might turn their nose up at adding a dollop of sour cream to their mashed potatoes, it really does give the end product a restaurant-quality feel and taste. In addition to milk, potato water, and butter, sour cream can help your potatoes come out smooth as satin. It also gives the spuds a slightly tangy and deeper flavor. Whisk It Real Good suggests adding the sour cream as you mash the potatoes, making sure not to overprocess the potatoes. You only need a few spoonfuls to get an excellent texture and a deeper taste. If you'd like, you can whip up your milk and sour cream together, then put both into the spuds at the same time. One of the key mistakes that everyone makes when whipping up some taters is making them at the wrong time. Mashed potatoes are best when piping hot and fresh and will quickly deteriorate if you leave them out for too long. As anyone who's ever lived through the seventh grade and has been served a slab of room temperature mashed potatoes in the cafeteria knows, whipped up spuds age poorly. As tricky as it is, it's vital to get your timing right. Cooking them too early can spell disaster or at best mediocre mash. If you do find yourself in a position where you have to reheat your potatoes, make sure you do it right so that they can bounce back to their original glory. For some, achieving mashed potato perfection is everything. This means something. This is important. So if you're dumping out all your potato water before mashing up your spuds, you're making a tragic mistake. Potato water is a fantastic way to add starchy liquid to your taters and can help them achieve an airier, more delicious texture in the end. Add it in bit by bit so your potatoes don't get too runny, and you'll be amazed at the results. According to Little House Living, potato water has a whole host of culinary uses. For example, you can swap it in for cornstarch or use it to make soups and gravy. In addition to the included starch, potato water has plenty of rich flavors, especially if you added fresh herbs, salt, pepper, or a bay leaf before cooking. So add a teaspoon or two of potato water to your mashed potatoes and save the rest for more culinary wizardry down the road. By nature, mashed potatoes are a rich and decadent dish. Fresh herbs can brighten things up a bit and add extra flavors to your spuds. Although you can pop some fresh or dried herbs into your cooking water to amp up the flavor, you can add them at the end too. Mashed potatoes are super versatile, and you can customize the herbs you use to match your main dish. Different types of fresh herbs play beautifully with the velvety bowl of buttery mashed, so you have plenty of options, including everything from basil to mint. You can mix in delicate fresh herbs at the end, sprinkle them on top, or infuse your butter with sage, basil, dill, or chives for a more subtle and exquisite flavor. Herb butter has tons of other applications too. You can put it on steak or other vegetables, or even spread it on dinner rolls for a fresh twist. Although you might associate nutmeg with seasonal baked goods and hot lattes, there's more to this spice than meets the eye. In fact, celebrity chef Michael Simon's classic mashed potatoes have the slightest hint of nutmeg mixed in for deep, rich flavor. The trick is to not overdo it. You don't want your mashed potatoes coming out tasting more like a coffee cake than heaps of delicious, buttery goodness. Nutmeg can add nuance and layers to your taters. As a secret weapon, it's second to none. But like all secret weapons, it's important to be aware of its power and use it sparingly. With great power comes great responsibility. A single pinch or two will do. Err on the side of caution because you can always stir and add a little bit more. A tiny bit of nutmeg will make your mashed potatoes wonderful, but too much will make them taste straight up weird. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.